Roof design. Designers encounter complex geometric configurations when they delve into larger houses with compound floor plans. Grasping essential roof design concepts makes the process easier to handle and allows you to deliver a better and more attractive solution. Break down the geometry of a roof into primary and secondary forms. For example, design one primary roof form that covers the main body of the structure and then allows smaller complementing roof forms to meet extensions off of the primary form. Study the video to discover how to configure different roof types. The following information does not include structural aspects or precise details, just overall shape and geometry of conventional roof configurations. Understand that if you approach roof design with a simplified geometric solution, structure and detail are less difficult to solve. The first primary characteristic of a roof is its pitch. From flat to steep, the slope distinguishes a design as much as the foundation, exterior walls, and layout. Flat roofs, which are never actually flat, as demonstrated in the upcoming material, are obviously the lowest roof pitch. High-pitched roofs dominate in elevation compared to low-pitched roofs, which imply a more contemporary and sleek theme. The number of units it rises to the number of units it crosses defines the roof pitch. For example, 4 inches up for every 12 inches across creates a low slope, a 4 to 12 ratio. If you rise 8 inches for every 12 inches across, the roof takes on far more body compared to the elevations below it. An example of a steep slope is 14 inches high for every 12 inches over. Beware that if you reverse your ratio, say 12 inches up for every 14 inches over, you change the slope and it is shallower than the 14-12 ratio. The same ratios identically work for metric dimensions. For example, if you rise 4 centimeters for every 12 centimeters horizontally, you have a 4 to 12 pitch. A true pyramid rises to a single pointed apex where the roof planes of equal pitch slope up from each of the four wall perimeters. Each of the four roof planes is identical. If the angle of the four roof planes differs, a pyramid does not form over the top of the square plan. It becomes more similar to a hip roof. Save different roof plane pitches for a later time after you grasp forms with identical pitches. Called a gable, two roof planes that meet along a ridge comprise the simplest roof form. The face created by the gable form of this shallow 412 slope is the gable end. In classical architecture, the gable end becomes a pediment when properly detailed. In a compound floor plan, extensions of a primary gable either intersect creating a valley, or lap, creating a fold. To check to see if your roof configuration properly lays out, view the roof and parallel projection. When each roof plane has the same pitch, the valley always appears at a 45 degree angle to the plan as long as the intersection of the roof planes is at 90 degrees. A roof with a steeper slope such as an 8-12 ratio, creates a larger attic. If the slope is steep enough and the width of its span is sufficiently broad, it allows space for a half story within the roof form. Slopes with less than the 8-12 ratio do not accommodate dormers well, so keep that in mind if you design a half story and need to place dormers in the roof for light and ventilation. In designing the half story, it is critical to consider the ceiling height and the thickness of the floor structure. A common floor depth is 10 inches, for example. Any space less than 5 feet in height, or 152 centimeters, under the roof plane is too low to count toward habitable space. So place the interior wall at the 5 foot location. A 40 foot span with an 812 pitch allows approximately 23 feet in attic room width. 
take the ceiling to reach 8 feet or open it to the peak of the gable form. A variation of the gable end is a gabled parapet wall. Rather than the roof plane overlapping the adjacent wall, the wall extends upward and past the roof structure, which dies to the inside of the gable. A strong profile results from the silhouette of the gabled wall form. Tudor, Mission, and French colonial styles occasionally host the gabled parapet, and the technique is seen in modern architecture as well. When two steeply pitched gable wall planes define the sides of the house, it is called an A-frame. An A-frame with a pitch of 1612 is a familiar house in mountain resort towns because the steep slope easily sheds snow. The form also eliminates exterior walls and their finishes on two sides of the house and replaces it with the roofing material that must cover the structure regardless. For those reasons, the configuration of an A-frame is very efficient. The catch is that most of the windows rest within the two gabled end walls and that limits interior arrangements. The next roof form, which is similar to a gable, is a shed. In the shed configuration, a single plane covers a portion or a whole section of the plan. When sheds abut one another, it allows the perfect spot for clear story windows, provided that the interior space is an open or vaulted ceiling. Since each shed is an independent roof plane, Varying the pitch of each, if desired, is simpler than in other roof forms. The gambrel roof form steps up the complexity of a roof configuration. The gambrel has two differing roof slopes. A steep slope, such as a 16-12 ratio, ascends from the wall below. It then changes pitch to a much shallower 4-12 ratio, for example. The gambrel configuration allows a more spacious half story than a gable form. Also, the steep initial slope easily receives a dormer. Historically, the advantage of the half story is that you are not building a full second floor, which is more expensive. The Dutch colonial style often employs the gambrel roof form with a series of dormer windows to vent and illuminate the half story. Similar to how roof planes fold inward from all four sides on the pyramid shape, the hip roof does the same but without equal elevations. The hip roof eliminates the gable face but requires more fascias, eaves, and gutters. To compound the hip form, imagine that you create a separate but complete hip roof for each rectangle of the plan. You then intersect the rectangle into the primary form. The intersection of roof forms creates valleys. As in the gable roof plan, a parallel projection of the hip indicates that all roof planes intersect at 45 degrees. As long as the ridge of each is 90 degrees to the adjacent ridge and the slope of each roof plane is the same pitch. Next up is the mansard roof. If you take a gambrel roof form and ascend from all four walls, as in the hip roof, you get the mansard form. A 17th century French architect, Francois Mansard, popularized the roof design during his time. The configuration delivers a roof structure that doubles as an extra habitable floor, since it leaves plenty of space within its shape. Unlike the gambrel, the initial slope of the mansard is very steep, say a 48 to 12 ratio, and the upper slope is very shallow, say a 2 to 12 ratio. Dormers pierce the perimeter of the steep roof form to allow windows to open into the attic, which is under the shallower pitch. A variation in the gable form is to dog ear the tip of the gable, sometimes called a jerkin head, though I prefer to call it a dog ear. Again, keep the slope ratio the same on each roof plane, though playing with a different slope can produce an entirely different effect. If the dog ear slope is much steeper, it produces a less pronounced clip off of the primary roof form. 
Reversing the dog ear detail gives us a gable on a hip variation. The ubiquitous ranch style occasionally employs this form. Depending on where the gable sits relative to the adjacent E, it is large when it is closer to the end or small when it is placed further from the end. The effect of each delivers distinctly different impressions. The gable on a hip roof configuration provides a smart and convenient location for attic ventilation as well. As mentioned, flat roofs are never actually flat. The detail of how a flat roof structure meets exterior walls determines the appearance and impression further defining the character of the building. A common roof configuration, prevalent in the Pueblo Revival style, meets the outer wall at a parapet. The roof structure sits behind the parapet. The roof plane makes a shallow slope towards scuppers to drain water away. The scupper pierces the wall and spouts outward to drain onto the ground, or drains to downspouts that channel the water to the ground or into an integrated grade pipe. Drains that descend within the wall and then spout out at the base of the wall are an option for the parapet design. Flat roofs with parapet walls suit a compound and irregular floor plan easily, since roof planes sit independently from one portion of the house to the other. Flat roof planes without parapets overhang or run flush with exterior walls. Pitch is just enough to drain water toward fascia gutters or toward drains built into the roof structure that connects to concealed downspouts or pipes that channel the water to daylight or into a drain field. The flat roof achieves a thin profile and adds to the rectilinear features on contemporary architecture. The segmental vault, a contemporary roof form, delivers a soft curve to a building shape the segmental vault often pairs with sections of flat roofs as the segmental form does not easily intersect with other segments or other types of roof forms. The span of the segmental vault is limited to the curved beam that creates the structure. 